Wow. What a game. I guess. You know, it wasn't much of a game until it was something near the end. <laughs> do we even talk about the ending, or do we just kind of skip it and then just talk about everything else? I don't know. Well, well uh, first of all, I, well, I, I, I – go ahead, Bobby. I was going to say, they're lucky – the Lakers just let, let it ride with that there yeah. is the only, only way that would go was in because that got way too close. Yeah, it did. Sherrod? Yeah, I mean the the good thing about this game is that the Celtics once again had an opportunity to beat a team that was shorthanded and they didn't choke it away. Yeah. Remember, I mean, they, they beat, you know, when it, when they beat, uh, what was it? Denver. Uh, they didn't have Jamal Murray. They didn't blow that opportunity. You don't have LeBron. You don't have AD. You, you handle that business, get the win, move on. But by no means should they be popping the collars about this one because this, this, it's just the yeah, the Charlotte Houston games, those were those were in that vein too, you know. Right. Yeah, the shorthanded, you're supposed to drill them. You're and supposed to drill them. And and yeah. they did that for the most part. The thing that I like more than anything else is that they're playing both ends of the floor now. Um, they're picking mm. their spots, they're sharing the ball, they're defending at multiple positions, they're defending as a group as opposed to individuals. Uh, they're doing a lot of good things, but damn, that back line, end of the bench, my goodness. Not even well, the end of the bench for our this. This just and I don't want to like I don't want to harp on the end of the game because it really doesn't matter, but it does too because we talk right. about the how thin this team is and forget the back end. Most back ends of NBA benches aren't helping you, but this back end of the bench right. isn't even ready to play NBA basketball as you can see here. And so the second line that they have isn't great, and, and that just shows the depth on this yeah, team. Yeah, but. You can't worry about the back end of the bench in a game. No, when you're but Rob, my point what, is, but you're missing the front Rob end Williams. Of the bench isn't very but it's good. not the point. It's not even the back end of the bench. It's it's the it's guys who would be in Maine right now. When you're right. down, when you're down Fournier and Williams, that means you're playing. You know, you go that deep. These are guys who would never see the court, even in a blowout. You know, like yeah. um. So I mean, you're not getting Tremont Waters. Sadly, Neesmith is in that situation. Wagner. Oh my goodness gracious, Wagner. I don't think should do anything um, ever again, you know, um, at every all. appearance Basket he's been horrible, like any basketball related activity. I would just, I would stop it. And he's I don't want to say his name again. I, <laughs> I, I don't, don't want to say his name. Yeah. I don't even want to say his name. Um, I, I is, that the worst, is that the worst move Brad's made all year with starting I, him? I want to bring Joe Sway on, but he's doing that old man poke at the monitor thing, and I can't tell. I'm looking <laughs> at him back there, and, and, and he doesn't look confident. Joe Sway, blink twice if you're confident. Give it a thumbs up. You want to come in, buddy? We're going to try him. We're going to try him. <laughs> How are you going to talk to me like I can't hear you, John? Come on. I can hear you, man. <laughs> Just because I'm just because He's doing I'm the old man. doesn't mean I can't hear you. I know you can hear me. That's why and I'm saying it. By the way, it. this is why this is why I hated the fact that people were trying to lump uh, Cornette with 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 Mo Wagner. I'm like, well, wait a minute. He's got a little more potential than Mo Wagner. It's I can't wait lot. to do the Cornette segment. It's not a but whole we lot. Were, but, but we were sold. A, we were sold a different bill, bill of goods. We were told that Wagner could play and Cornette was going to be cut as soon as they uh, filled yeah. out their roster. That's and well, here's. But here's the thing about guys at the end of the bench. If you're going to be at the end of the bench, you need to have one discernible skill that if all else fails, there's one thing that's that you are pretty good at. Yeah. Cornette, he can shoot the hell out of the ball. That's that's a that's an and block some shots, apparently. I'm not going to put I'm not going there just yet, Bobby. He did Come that on. tonight, but a little bit. I, I'm not gonna put that on that is not gonna be on his resume. Um, how about the way uh, the, the way Tyler Zeller used to block shots? No, a little bit of that. You had to bring in Tyler. Z I, Tyler Zeller. <laughs> he'd give seriously. you a block every, every once in a while. He'll give you a block like that. He's got he's got that going. Okay, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. But I mean, it's it's Zeller. But. All I'm saying, if the Celtics are interested in Isaiah, we know who's gonna get cut. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> yeah. we do. 
Uh, but, well, but you, know, but you know, what we haven't talked about is is Jalen Brown, who was all in the bag. Pass. The yeah. No, we're doing we're doing Jalen tonight. <laughs> I'm just messing around, John. You you know we got called out on Twitter about that. You already know. I know, I know. It cracks me up. Like <laughs> he was. Everyone... So, it, the thing about Jalen to the two, tonight, the two minutes on Jalen. It wasn't even just that he was scoring; it was how he was scoring. I mean, he yeah. was seriously in his and one bag. I mean, behind the back, between the legs, splitting defenders for layups. I mean, this was this was a this was the Jalen Brown special tonight. Um, he was really good, really yeah. good. I honestly, he can keep those in his bag. I just like it when he's just kind of when he's just in shooting in rhythm, you know. And and he was doing, it was that it was that I early feel season. the complete opposite early season Jalen. I like when he goes to the basket too. I don't like when he gets super fancy because he's still you know, he had six turnovers. He's losing the ball off his leg on a lot of those moves. But yeah. I like him when he's aggressive and attacking, or when he's you know in, when he's quick and decisive to shoot. And Bobby disagrees with everything apparently. <laughs> I just – this is exactly what I want from him. I want him active on the ball, involved on every single play, taking a ton of shots every game because yeah. he's this efficient. And I saw Jared Weiss tweet this out. This was the most efficient game for a high-volume shooter in Celtics history. No one has ever shot this efficient shooting 15 or more shots, and only 32 players have done in NBA history. Now, he came no, in garbage was He came in a garbage time game. and hit a few more. Uh, so well, oh my god, how important was historic. that bucket? How important was that bucket in garbage time? Like they needed something and not that was a difficult shot. I mean, yeah, he's he driving, but he's off balance. He clearly get bumped and he's one handed off the glass. That was a really tough bucket. They absolutely yeah. had to have it too. So I'm gonna I mean, look was, up he was I'm gonna out look up mind. NBA history players who um have shot this efficient on 20 shots. I'm sure it's a very short list. Yeah, I this think Jared he had 36 points that. in like 30 minutes. My goodness. He was bananas. I, I, think, I think he's like the 32nd player to 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 score that many points off of uh off of off of uh, Ser- seriously though. I mean who's, attempts, something like that. Who's more efficient in I the mean, NBA no, right now? Attempts. Like you we're talking centers when it comes to guys who are this efficient. Right. It's unreal. Mm-hmm. Who? No, yeah, no question. But um, yeah, I, I was thinking of John down the stretch when uh, that, that last <laughs> basket, the way he caught it, I was like, "Whoa, that might be a turnover." John's gonna, he's gonna lead with this. If, if Jalen loses the ball, it, this is a one possession game. Well, I think it was a five point game, but still too close for comfort, right? And I'm thinking if Jalen loses the ball here, opening segment going in on Jalen Brown. I would not have made, done that, but he made um, it. He would have no. thought about it. He would have done it. No, he no, would have no, mentioned no, it for no, sure. No, no question. No. No, that's not right. I love I love Jalen. The, the 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 knock here is that we don't talk about Jalen when he has one of those like twenty five point games because he played well. And it's like, yeah, it's you know because it's sometimes you're right. Efficiency can be boring sometimes. He goes out and has those kind of yawn, you know, like hey, twenty four, you know, twenty four point games on you know eight of fourteen shooting, and you're like, yeah, whatever. He does it all the time. But I mean, he was out of his mind tonight. So, so I mean, I, it's imp- yeah, it's impossible not to talk about it. So yeah. 20, 20 shots, 17 or 20 shot, at least 20 shots and 85% field goal. Only 16 players have ever done it. David Robinson, Shaq, Carlos All Boozer, centers. Larry Wright, Eddie Is there Curry, anybody Dominic under Wilkins. Six, well, Clay Thompson and uh, Gordon Hayward have done it, believe it or not. Gordon yeah. Hayward did it with the Celtics. Did it he here? Shots, yeah. He shot 17 to 20 in a game. That's mm-hmm. funny. Uh, yeah. The greatest um, game he ever played. <laughs> uh who else kareem no Giannis, Will- <laughs> yeah we'll leave gordon we'll leave gordon alone tonight no but you're right i mean he's i mean i mean look there's other guys out there too who are doing this like uh just in terms of uh uh efficiency i, I mean luca is luca right. beal curry they're all shooting close to jalen's percentage for guards zach Le- zach levine actually higher oh, man. higher field goal percentage so this there's, there's a lot there. of guys having having seasons like Kawhi um also booker booker's out of his mind so there's a, there's quite a few non-bigs at or around 50 percent shooting um this season um so it is and and a lot of guys who make a lot of their bones oh, n- not at the rim either uh so i mean jalen's been phenomenal but there's a bunch of guys this year who are actually absolutely lighting it up you know the, the, there's the year also of no- a bunch of teams that aren't playing defense yeah, I mean, the, like, the year like, of no, the year of no defense changes yeah, like, everything. Like, like, no Lakers have the yeah. best defensive rating in a league, but 
in past years, that would be maybe fourth, fifth, maybe. Uh, I, I think right right now the Lakers, who have the best defensive rating, it'll be like the worst defensive rating for an NBA leader ever since they've yeah. been keeping track of that stat. And it's hard to call this team uh, that that we saw tonight the Lakers. You know, I mean, uh, whatever stats are are associated with this right. team, uh, it certainly doesn't apply here. We do need to mention. Um, you know, now that we have a bunch of you guys in here hanging out with us, uh, we are doing it. We're going to do it again. We're going to do this locker room thing. Locker room. We are sponsored by Locker Room. Okay. We went in the other night. And we went for it. Joe Sway made it a, a full eight minutes before falling asleep in the chat. <laughs> we need. We have the wow. source here. We need for to see what hour. happens. That's how you do me, huh? Joe Sway, <laughs> I thought of tonight just putting a, uh, uh, just putting a still of you in the screen here and see if joke. and see if anybody <laughs> noticed. I did just, a solid half. This all <laughs> well, so you he, you he fell asleep himself, on the air. He had himself muted, and I'm thinking like, oh, he's just being respectful and quiet. No, he was not yeah. the hell out. Yeah. <laughs> I was tiptoeing out of there a little bit. Yeah, out he texted room. me. He's like, so I'm gonna kind of. I didn't even see it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I spoke. I spoke for a while, and I was like, little by little. You know, yeah. you know, when you're at the party, you're trying to make your way out. You know, you don't want to make a huge scene. So uh, yes, we do know Joe Sway. Now yeah, we do. Exactly. So I see people freaking out about the collapse <laughs> blasting Brad. I mean, it's funny to laugh at, but I mean, come on. What do you I, do? I, wait, who blasted what? Wait, everyone's on, blasting. Talk. Everyone's Time blasting out. Brad online. Time out. I didn't finish the, the locker room. Let me just get the message out. Oh yeah, go ahead. Sorry guys. Uh, so locker room. It's an audio only app for those of you who are new to it or new to the show. Uh, if so, welcome. Um, but uh, do two things. Go to the iOS. Uh, go to, you know. Go download this on the iOS uh, app store. Uh, it's not available on Android yet, but um, download it. Um, and we will put a link in the chat here and you guys can come join us uh, and uh, hang out. And we will. Uh, what you get to do is you get to be part of the conversation. Um, so you raise your hand. We, we, we put you on the stage with us and we talk basketball. So it's kind of our post game show overtime. We're going to carry it out um, after we uh, talk here for a little bit. So definitely come join us. It's been fun. We've done it every game for the last few games, even with these late games. We're really big in Australia and Indonesia. These guys friggin' love these West Coast games because they're getting out of work. Yeah, they're, they're getting out of work and hanging with us. But the rest of you, if you want to hang, hang. If you haven't talked yet or you haven't joined the chat, please do. We want to hear from more of you. But, uh, Bobby, go uh, go into what you were talking about. Uh, people, all I got to say is people are blasting Brad. What do you what do you want him to do? Who was blasting get, Brad? For what? People on Twitter, they're freaking out because they blew the lead. People on I, Twitter aren't real, Bobby. Yeah, I know, but there's a <laughs> lot of them. Like, this isn't just one guy. I, I'm seeing – yeah, you're right. But again, if anyone's in the chat thinking that or anyone's on Twitter saying that, it, again, you don't want to bring the starters back in too soon. You don't want to bring the starters back in at all. If they had just made one basket down the stretch there, they would have been fine. When, when you yeah. when you empty the bench like that with a 27-point lead against the Lakers that mm -hmm. don't have LeBron, don't have AD, Schroeder had like an infected foot and he was limping out there. I was Sunday um, played. Yeah, and – there's no reason in the world why your end of the bench guys should not be able to maintain a 27 point cushion. Yeah. That's all there is to it. I mean, yeah, that's, not, I, that's unacceptable. I can't, I can't put that. Now, the only thing that I would say, maybe Brad should have gone with the core guys a little bit earlier, but to me, to me, that that's just, that's just being nitpicky uh, because in his shoes, why should I have to do that? You're, yeah. you're NBA players. I, I I'm literally love asking that. you. I'm literally asking you to hold down the fort. You don't have to step it up. You don't have. You just just be adequate. That being and said, anyway. that being said, the only thing I'll say, I this is, I agree, Bobby. Anybody criticizing Brad for playing a guy playing your bench in a 27 point game, I mean, that's that, ridiculous. But I will say the only thing, I, if you're Brad, you do want to say with the caveat, like guys. I do want you to play, but let's not – just be smart. You Don't shoot in the first 10 seconds of the shot clock. You know, like I know you right. don't get lots of action. you got to play smart. Work the ball around. Get a good shot. Play a real game. Play Kill, it some, clock. Kill some clock. Kill some clock. Play as if it's a real see, situation. But when you see Tremont Waters yeah. getting the ball and like, oh, my God. and he's Lakers like, were getting close with 350 to go. They were Trem killing any that's clock. That's what I mean. Like, Tremont's pushing the pace and shooting early in the clock. At that point, you just pull him out. Like, you you don't have to do the wholesale change but you call a timeout and you say you have to stop this like you <laughs> you are killing us and edwards you know like right. guys 
individually, this is a disaster. Like, slow it down. Uh, yeah, that's exactly. the only thing I'll say there. You know? I, I think that's what makes it so frustrating because it's like you we you look at the stars and it's like they gave you a, a good enough cushion to close this one out. And you know what? Just like I what was it last week when when I when I uh, applauded Brad for keeping the stars in at the end of that first quarter because they weren't playing so well, but he wanted them to figure it out because they were playing the the damn Minnesota Timberwolves. I believe it was that game. Like in that same regard, this the uh, second unit garbage time squad, whatever you want to call them. They're, that's their job. You're supposed to take care of that lead. And you know what? For the starting uh, unit, you got to beat up on them in practice next time, you know, or or they're not going to have much practice, right? Next time you guys can get in uh, five on five or whatever. I mean, that's because they're going to need that. I mean, the stars need to feel they need to be in a space in the postseason or even heading heading towards the end of the, the regular season. They have to feel in a space where they, they can say, OK, if we have a good enough cushion. We can trust these guys to take over. We cr- trust this these is, guys to close this one out. And they have to be ready for that as well. You know, this is why it matters, Joe Sway. Because, the, again, these guys that we're talking about don't matter, but the guys above them aren't that much better off that bench. Like tonight, Romeo, Grant, Semi, those kind of guys that were playing bench minutes. Wasn't great. Those guys were squandering leads too, made it a little bit too close during middle portions of this hey, game, they, which they turned we won't it, even get into. They pushed they, – they won the game uh, with with uh, with on that with the Cornette group. I mean, they won it with a couple bench guys out there mixed in with well, starters. Well, Cornette was good. That was yeah, a huge yeah. relief. I thought so, Jalen yeah. was done. Like Jalen shouldn't have grabbed his forty piece tonight. Like he should have been done by then. Like, yeah. You know? No, but when Fournier was with that group a week and a half ago against Charlotte, they actually extended a lead in a blowout. So right. it was a different story then Again, when you had an extra starter. You know, who could the run best, with those the guys. best part about the best part about that last group that was out there is it gives you yet another receipt as to justifying why certain guys will not play when you can empty the bench like yeah number 20 because i'm not going to say his name number 20 for the boston celtics i don't want to see him out there again all season now that's the second all guess season. playing him over taco I, that's, that's for me that's what the fans is, is that when, is when that Tyler, wagner's number i had to go look it up okay that's when <laughs> they gave when taco, hayward's when, number when away taco gets think about this though we have seen taco on the floor end of the game plenty of times we have never seen a, f- a squad with Taco on the floor. If I'm Taco tonight, like this. I'm having a yeah. conversation. <laughs> hey, if, this is my role. Exactly. I mean, and, and Taco can be like, you do realize that that doesn't happen when I get in the yeah. game end of game, right? You do know that, right? Right. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Come on. I mean, and that isn't day. the first time this happened this year. I don't know. I couldn't remember the game, but there, there was, was another, another game. Walk- there was a walk of shame game earlier in the year too. It might have been Washington. There was, there was. It happens again. I, like I said, is it's when you have two, you know, starting caliber slash you know top seven players out. It, 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 the what you're bringing in off the bench, even in those blowouts, is totally different. You know, if they yeah. but it's uh, it's uh, we know this. Look, even look, they were thin. Then they traded for Fournier. They're still pretty thin, but you are still looking at. At least eight, eight. How many players? Obviously, the starters plus Fournier plus Tristan is seven, and then you feel pretty good having Pritchard out there as well. And you're Cornette eight, now. I mean, so I mean, you're 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 about. I'm not eight. there, Bobby. I'm not I'm, there. Just right. not there. Can I we mean. do it? What the Cornette segment? Can we do it? Are, yeah. Aren't we? Aren't we kind of doing it? Yeah, I think we did already. Do we I have to rise him? Listen. Bobby, let's do go we have all to fully, in corner right, right now and just commit. get it out of our system because we're not going to get many opportunities going forward. You know that and I know that. So let's get it out of your system now. Come on. Let's have it. So I was I was stunned the last few games ago <laughs> when Tristan Thompson came back and Cornette was taken out of the rotation because – you were stunned. Things- you were stunned. Yes, I was stunned. I thought they would continue to funnel him a few minutes a night, especially on a night like uh, Portland on Tuesday. Can we do this without hyperbole? Pick and roll. Can we just say he played okay and like do this without hyperbole? I think he's an <laughs> awesome defender. <laughs> I Listen, think he. Moved. I don't even have a graphic with him with a green awesome. shirt yet. He's wearing red. Again, three, three assists here. He's they not raw, but they won't even give me an updated graphic. I'm looking at. He's wearing red here, Bobby. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna pull away. I'm gonna pull my Rashid Wallace card and just say Cornette played well tonight. 
That's what everything you say about him. I, Cornet played well tonight. And then leave but it there. Every every time he, it's the opposite of Wagner. Every time he has played so far, he's been good. And Cornet so played well tonight. <laughs> yeah. So, 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 I mean, look from the very beginning, whether it's a three point shot or the hard screens or or heck, even the the good hands passes. Hand, yeah, it's solid. It's good. You know, when someone's in foul trouble, when someone's not available, and Robert Williams, but it's not Cornet ideal. played well tonight. You know, it's not ideal. That's it. All I'm going to say is I could see him back with the team next year. I think he does a lot of things they like. I think Man. he fits a great role there. And happens, he's man, got, that's, that's the end of the He's end got of the nice for, size. Uh, for Taco, man. That's I think I size. played well tonight. You guys, yeah. all right, I might be too high on him, but you guys are definitely too low no, on him right I now. No, I just think if we're if we're going to go through likely scenarios right now, I think it's more likely Cornette is playing like in Spain than he is on the Celtics. Wow. Like, <laughs> well, let's put it this way. If he's back – with the Celtics next year, that means Danny did not get done what he was planning to get done in the offseason. Because yeah. I can guarantee you Danny anticipates he will have an upgrade over Luke Cornett next season. All right. I, let's I'm, put I this feel on. very confident in saying he plans to have an upgrade over Luke Cornett next season. Let's put you this better. on tape for uh, training camp 2021. I – I like him a lot more than you guys. I'm not I, saying I, I Bobby, that. Bobby, 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 why do, that, that's not the I plan. I don't disagree with that. My, my question really there, Bobby, is why do this to your reputation, okay? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I was not, I was not Bobby, waving. Why before. is this the hill you want to die on, the Luke Cornett hill? I thought <laughs> this guy was out the door when they got him. I didn't know anything about him. But I've watched him play in five or six games now, and he's done good things pretty much every minute he's been on the floor. I just I think he's a valuable rotation piece at that position. I swear I think you do this intentionally. Hey, I get some like supporters third, in the chat. I think you like him as your second center or your third center. Third center for sure. Okay, I was going to so, say if he's just second, that's a problem. That's, well, that's again, all right. So meant, let's let's make this a real conversation. That's what I meant about the taco thing. If he's back if, next year, then taco's gone. You can't have two of those at the end of the bench, right? I mean, so let's say Rob's about to miss. Some real time here, which seems even possible. even though Brad said he's day to day and he's not worried, but let's let's just assume he's going to miss a lot of time. Well, who knows? I I think they got to do more tests and stuff like that and see what it is and be cautious. I would definitely be cautious with it if they could. Yeah, especially this if, close to the playoffs. Yeah, say he's going to miss three or four games here. I feel pretty good about Cornette taking those minutes. I'd start him. Robert no, Williams, no, Bobby, Bobby, Bobby. Wait, time out, time out, time out. You want to, when you uh, say you, you feel, feel good, good about him playing those minutes, are you saying you feel good that he can give you comparable production or impact of Robert Williams? No, I'm saying he can be step in and be a good backup to Tristan. No, he tried to bail you out too, man. Sherrod, you tried. You tried. I did. I did. I did. I did. You, you saw that, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I said, here's the preserver. And I'm like, Bobby, Bobby, like take it. Take he's, it. Walk, he's walking you back off the ledge, and you're just running right out to it again. <laughs> this, this is what Cornick Bobby, gets for four I'm blocks, three you. assists. Teammate, teammate, yeah, I'm man. trying to help you. He got the hoodie this, on and everything. Jeez. This is the Cornet segment Bobby wanted. I'm just hey, saying, I'm Bobby, trying. put it this way. I guess I just Robert, need a few more games out of him. The oh, okay. Robert Williams, you can from you three. Robert Williams Cornet Bobby played well this. tonight. Probably Robert okay. Williams is probably the third or fourth, I don't know, whatever you want to say, biggest reason for this turnaround, or at least a significant part of it. Like taking him out of that and just put plugging in Cornet, that's that's a tough that's no, a tough I'm not pass. glad Rob's gone. I'm not that's gonna do that. Pass. Sure you're not. I'm just saying <laughs> with or Rob's without out, like Daniel Tice, a, you could either have Mo pass. Wagner or Luke Cornet here. Taking Bobby was those so minutes. excited to Grant share that with there. us in the chat today that Rob was out. He was so excited because he got he got to get Tristan to start and he got Cornet. Tristan played a good bench. game. You know, he Bobby's did. Taking, Tristan's, Tristan's Bobby's good run here. Continues. I will do it. We can Bobby, do a you're legit this whole Robert Williams shade to a whole other level, man. I know. <laughs> we can do a legit Tristan Thompson is good segment because I expect Tristan Tristan Thompson's playing his best basketball of the season post COVID here, right? This is the Cleveland Absolutely. Tristan Thompson that I was expecting. Much better, right? But you knew it was gonna happen in LA too. You knew he was gonna be feeling himself in LA. Except for <laughs> that free throw. Even when I was like, this, though, this was a 2022 really audition. Though. For LA, he's like, "Hey guys, come get me." No problem. You don't want Drummond. You don't need Drummond. Come get me. This is the good. You saw when he dapped up. You saw when he dapped up LeBron. 
Yeah. Come on, man. I know you I know you saw my phone calls and text messages. You never call me back. What's going on? <laughs> well, this is a good night to rem- still three Next though. season, I'm going to LA. Let's do this. Th- this is a good night as a reminder that we really wanted Drummond here. Just because, you know, if you can take a no, guy like that, you take I never him. did. I never did. We all wanted him. I can pull no, the tape and see no, that we all wanted no. him. Most we were all fans that wanted we're... him. It was like a cop out. It wasn't like desire, you know. <laughs> it was just well, this is last my, my thing. Of, if you could get Andre Drummond for pennies on a dollar, then absolutely. Sure. Yeah. We said absolutely. we said we'd take him on the walkout, but none of us wept when he signed elsewhere. Like exactly. You know, oh like yeah. It was like, I mean that's true. But yeah, we all we, wanted we were him. like whatever. We, I I was actually wondering again if he were my, bought out, and you can get it for minimum. Absolutely. Yeah. Even then, oh, yeah. I was still dubious because I, I if it meant reduced Rob minutes in a weird three man rotation at center and having to start him to placate his ego or whatever promises you would have made to get That's him true. to come here, all of that stuff I thought was a little bit iffy. So, uh, you know, I I wasn't super sure about. I was you know, I was uh I'll claim it. I was I was openly a a, a, a Lamarcus Aldridge guy. So, yeah, Ooh. but yeah, I yeah, was. No, I was one of the guys who would just take him if he would come. Now, right. Tristan, I was. We didn't know what Tristan would be able to provide at that time. He was still low, and he did not play all that well before he went out. He has Which, played sensational since he's come back. Well, you know what they're doing more of though now, Bobby. I mean, they're actually getting. They're attacking the rim and. When the defense collapsed, they're either finishing with contact or they're finding Tristan. And Tristan is doing a good job of making himself available, giving them an alternative to throw the rock to. And yeah, he's passing it, it out. Yeah. Yes. But we, yeah, we didn't see that earlier. You got to have hands some of those passes, man. Like, one of them in particular was Marcus Smart. Man, that lob, I was like, Rob Williams could get that. I mean, but Tristan Thompson, like, he had to go out and get that. And whether it's in traffic or whether it's down low – uh, behind that, behind the back from Jason Tatum. Oh, right, man, right. Like, hot for him to even weave that through. But again, you know, credit to Tatum, but also credit to Tristan Thompson for grabbing that through the through those, and there's, through those Lakers hands, through those uh, Lakers defenders. Um, on, on top of that, you. there was one thing, Bobby. Just real quick, uh, you know, uh, you don't want to pass up an opportunity for me to compliment your boy Tristan, but um, apology but cam time. Ass. No, one thing I jokingly, um, uh, you know, kind of tweeted about was that he, uh, you know, he he passed out of the post uh, early right. in the game. He got one down low. He never does that, but he immediately looked for Jalen. Jalen knocked down a three. That was yeah, early, yeah, early in the first yeah. quarter. And I was like, well, one, the movement was outstanding across the board, you know, in that first quarter. They really stagnated a little bit after that, you know, initial run. But they were moving the ball great. But Tristan was part of that. He wasn't that little vacuum where he gets it in there. And yeah. doing all of the things that you love seeing him doing, which is just fighting for every rebound, every loose ball. Like, that's what he's supposed to be doing out there. Oh, but you're he right. leveled Horton Tucker on one yeah. play. He did. On the boards. He did. It was beautiful. There are four <laughs> things about him that's that you I want five, to five assists for Tristan Thompson? That was outstanding. Yeah, yeah that's five? a big one for me. Damn. He's, he's that's moving a... the ball out of the post. It's almost it's... like he's watching Robin, like, oh, yeah, crap, yeah, that's I'll what you got to do? Oh, <laughs> you, you can, can do pass. I get yeah. it. But five is a season high for assists for him. I think by two, I, I, I looked earlier, I think his season high was three. So, I mean, that's a big deal um, yeah. for, for him. So that was and, great. He's and then you, more you got vertical. the Celtics offensive rebounding machine, a.k.a. Peyton Pritchard. How does he do that? Yeah. I mean, I mean everyone, this is just, a team. everyone sleeps on him. It's, they're I mean, like, they, and they're things. legitimate offensive rebounds. I mean, he's actually yeah. leaving the ground, snatching it. It's not like it's just falling in his hands. How the hell does he do that yeah. consistently? That's right. a, that's the identity of this team, really. They are going to be all over the offensive boards every night. In Which ways is so that, crazy. Like, lately. Lately, yes. Season, it is crazy. No. That's never been them. It's yeah. been no, them. not since <laughs> not since the Danny Fortson days. Like that's not a th- you know that that's Danny Fortson. Oh, <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Yo, that dude was a beast. I remember him, Danny Fortson. No, and Damn. you know what amazes me about it, John? And then they got him. What was it? Was it the uh, the Nuggets, right? Yeah, no, I'm just messing mm. around. But that's not that's never been a thing that they're they excel at. <laughs> no, but they're um, really and good they're at really, it. really really doing it. And, and and you gotta throw it. That's a team effort there too, because you right. have Marcus obviously is aggressive. Romeo in his stint has been really really good on the but offensive remember glass. Remember Smith? When um, Neesmith was yeah. playing, he was all over it. Yeah, Neesmith crashing his body all over the place, trying to make some contribution. Yeah. Yes, even he was doing something. Um, <laughs> when so his yeah. code was in, when his code yeah. was working, you know. Rob, Rob you know, obviously the, the, the has been outstanding. Yeah, exactly. Now, there's downsides to that. 
I think that's another reason their defense hasn't been what it can be this year because if everyone's piling in, that's just going to send the other team out the other way when they don't get it. But they're so good at it that they do they get that ball at a higher rate than other teams do. And usually they turn it into outside shots. Rob gets a ton of assists in those opportunities. The way in which they chase those rebounds and are smart with their putback attempts and second chance opportunities makes it a truly effective play for them. It wears away at opposing defenses, and they do it against some of the best rebounding teams in the league. I know the Lakers didn't have their best personnel out there tonight. It would have been impressive to see that against Drummond and the likes, but they've done it against the Clippers. They've done it against Minnesota at this point. Like Just some bigger teams with great rebounders inside, they get in there. And what I want to throw out there about Thompson, since he came back, 100 defensive rating, 121 offensive rating, that's just astounding. They're killing opposing second units with him and Grant out there. Grant's defensive rating with Thompson is 99. I mean, in today's NBA, that's elite of the elite. Yeah. Yeah, because in, in this day, in this NBA this year, I mean, if, if your defensive rating is like below 105, you're like elite. Yeah. Solid, which is yeah. which is scary because that's like say, maybe top 10 most years. I, yeah, I'd say the average is like 111 this year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. I mean, a lot of it. I, I feel like now this final stretch, teams can can either be showing their true identity or they could just you know fall from the wayside. You know what I mean? Like they could just see the finish line and say, ah, you know, this is it. Pack it and pack it out. And the Celtics look at the rest of the the what's left, the teams that are left on the regular schedule, a regular season schedule. I mean, I, I don't think I don't expect these guys to win out, but they could really secure one of these top five spots. Their I schedule think. is not that hard the rest of the way if you look at it. I mean, just it. tonight, tonight, tonight's win it's very significant because of what happened the game before them, right? I mean, the Atlanta Hawks. So that's a against, cool thing that happened. They dropped obviously. one against the Bucks. I mean, all of a sudden, oh look at that! You know, they, they're tied. But again, yeah. a couple of losses here and there, a couple of wins. You know, it could go either way. But the Celtics, the schedule is in their favor. Let's see if they don't, you know, mess yeah. this one up. Yeah, because I think they're like bottom ten as far as like strength of schedule the rest of the way. Uh, oh, which... and you can tell when you look at it. It's right. they got the Thunder, the Hornets twice, the Spurs who are falling apart, the Magic, Calves, Wolves. Right down like the stretch those are teams here. That, that are they're smelling they're smelling vacation or whatever. You know, like they're like yeah. Let's just pack it in, you know, and so this have to just just pick they should up be able to, they should be able to stack up at least another ten wins out of the out of these remaining games. I think so. Really? I mean, the only hard games left: Suns, Nets, a Heat series, Blazers, mm -hmm. and that's about it. That's There's about only it. about yeah. five yeah. really hard games left. Heat Blazers. Win the games Nets. you're supposed to, and win half the games that are up in the air, and you, you're looking at another 12, 13 wins. Yeah, this team can really go on a run here to end the year, especially if they're going to get healthy. All they need is Fournier back now, and this team looks loaded, complete, and finally balanced on both ends of the floor. I mean, they're getting he they're getting healthy, and they're getting right at the both time, as long as Rob is right here. And I know John's just kind of shaking that one off, but no, that no, doesn't no. worry me I, about. I don't, I don't believe anybody when it comes to injuries. Um, the, so no question about it. You, you, weren't, you weren't concerned about the hip when you first found out about it, John? Come on. No, I'm saying I don't believe – no, I, it's the opposite. I actually always think it's worse. Uh, at, yeah. this, mm -hmm. at this point, the fact that he was probable and not out – you know, right out of the right out of the gate, seems like a cautious approach more than it does, um, you know, uh, legitimate concern. Legitimate yeah. concern, but that's just my that's my vibe. I, it, you know, maybe not. We'll see. Um, but certainly, you'll feel a lot better about it when he's there, you know, and yeah. and, and and playing. So, um, you know, I like we'll that. Uh, I like that starting five. You know, like I've been saying, the more reps for those guys, the the better. Yeah. Um, so that's good here. Um, as far as this game goes, again, uh, you know, not a ton to be learned because it was such a banged up Celtics team. But outside of Jalen and outside of uh, Tristan, and we did a, a, an ungodly amount on Cornette already. Um, <laughs> did a whole damn episode on Cornette. Yeah, the guys. Whole, uh, anything yeah, the guys else Kemba, I'd say. Anything else that stood out to you guys? Kemba, <laughs> Kemba was so there. He had seven assists, which was good to yeah. see. But the other thing, the streak of assists with Kemba, I think that's like – It's real. It's six straight games now, I think, with five or more or six or right. more assists. I forget what it is. Um, but it's definitely something real, and it's definitely something um, that uh, – Sherrod talked about it last game. Uh, definitely matters – 
because you're talking about him kind of redefining himself and making an impact in some way, whether it's in the way that he's normally accustomed to. What's funny is I think it was, was it Shaq saying it? And I, who cares what Shaq and Barkley say? They don't watch basketball. I don't even think they watch the games that they're talking about on the night that they're on TV. But uh, uh, I don't, I really However. don't. I, I literally don't even think they're watching the Celtics game, uh, you know, when they go to talk at halftime. But he was saying Kemba's Kemba's around 18 now. He's got to get himself to 22 points per game in the playoffs if Boston's going to go anywhere. And I completely disagree with that. I don't think that that's what he needs to be at all. I would actually rather this version of Kemba that takes the offense when it's there um, and is a little bit more of a facilitator and does more things. We saw his line last game, the rebounds and assists. I'll take seven assist Kemba. I'll take seven assist 14 point Kemba any day. Depends yeah. on how we get those 14 points. I mean, tonight right. he was, he had like, he was four for seven shooting and that's great. Yeah. But if he's like four for 17 shooting with 14 points, different. It's not. But that's yeah. why I'll take, I'll take efficient Kemba. It worries me. So I can never tell whether it's a decision for Kemba saying I'm doing what the game needs and I'm going to shoot less or he's feels for some reason he can't get his shot because when that's always the worry is like, is there anything physical behind him feeling that like I can't get to my spot today, so I'm not going to be trying as much or it's just a this isn't a game where you need me. JB's hot and I'm just going to move the ball around. If it comes to me in an opportunity to score, I'll take it. Was it a passive game for him in that regard? Is he deciding that he wants to, you know, this is how he wants to play it? Because when he has these really low shot games, sometimes it's matchup. It's like, you know, specific. But I don't know. Why do you think those kind of come up? From, from time to well, time. Well, I think t tonight, this was more about end of the road trip. JB's got it going on. We're just going to ride him all the way back to Boston and get yeah. this win. Um, I, but I, I think you're right. I do think that he does have games where the matchup more than anything else dictates how aggressive he is as far mm -hmm. as looking for a shot. That um, but but again, that, that gives back to what I was saying, saying the other day about how I like the fact that Kimba is figuring out ways to contribute and not have to score to do so. Um, right. Because I think when he first came here, that's kind of what they were expecting and looking for him every single night. And I thought that was a problem with that because remember in Charlotte, he scored a ton of points, but he wasn't efficient with it. Yeah. And so I, I didn't have a feel for whether he could make that transformation to becoming an efficient score when he's been in the league for damn near a decade and hasn't been. Yeah. So what's he going to give me? other than points can he do other things can he rebound I, de defense i'm not even going to worry about defense because kimba's always going to be at some disadvantage at that end of the floor can he do other things to help us offensively and kimba's right. doing that his rebounding right. his his passing and and along the passing he's also keeping the turnovers low uh that's yes. that's another part like because i think he had like two turnovers tonight yeah. uh and, and so seven important. assists yeah, yeah, it's huge. Yeah, it's really important, huge. especially uh, Saturday. I think Saturday night's going to be such a great test. Steph Curry is, is doing his thing, obviously trying to will his team into a better, you know, playoff positioning. And, you know, it's, it's Saturday night at TD Garden, you know. The, the lights will be bright and everybody's going to be, you know, playoff atmosphere. You mm -hmm. know, players will, will be really competitive. And I think this is a great opportunity for Kemba to, to demonstrate what he can do if he's not, you know, the most best, you know, the, the greatest defender against shiftier guards like a like a Steph Curry, you know, I think it's going to be interesting to see how Marcus Smart, you know, is able to defend that. But of course, Kemba is really interesting because on the offensive end, like you said, Sherrod, and uh, you know, we talked about it the other night. I mean, if he's not feeling it, if he's not hitting those three point shots, he has to be effective offensively to get guys their shots, make sure guys are put in their their pos a good position to score, while also, of course, taking care of that basketball. You know, Jalen Brown. Uh, sometimes he's racking up those those turnovers. You know, John, you talked about it. Uh, we saw what happened with the, the team as a whole. How, all those turnovers in the second half, how the how the uh, the Lakers were, were able to come back. I mean, you can't do that against the Warriors. You can't really do that against any team in this at this part at this point of the season for the Celtics team trying to uh, you know find this identity or at least uh, turn this final corner, final stretch here. They, they just can't. I just think they have to uh, clean it up more. Um, obviously the second half, you walk away from this Lakers game thinking that, but also you go into this Warriors game implementing uh, cleaner basketball offensively and, and specifically seeing how Kemba Walker is going to do in this matchup against Steph Curry. They got to yeah. stay on a string defensively. I mean, that that to me, we, we can go through all of the, the great scoring that JB's doing and, and Tatum is killing everyone and Kemba's keeping turnovers high, or excuse me, assists high and turnovers low, but it's their defense that's winning them 
these games. You know, they, they've been like bottom five, bottom ten for a good part of the season. You look at the last ten games coming into this, I think they were like maybe four for fifth in it's defensive top, rating. Uh, it's all a choice, though. You know, like I know right. Bobby, Bobby will talk about personnel, and certainly Tristan has helped. It's really all a choice. You could see early in this game, their rotations, they were just moving. There weren't a lot of early looks. Then they right. fell out of it a little out. You didn't call then they fell. Once. Yeah, they, then they fell out of it a little bit, and you could see all of a sudden LA started getting some early looks. So, it, it, I mean, again, I mean, it, it, it's not just this year. It's not just this team. It's basketball. Defense is a choice. You know, it, it always is. Uh, it's yeah. just whether or not you want to fully commit to playing full effort. And again, a lot of people make the case. You know, this year the reason teams aren't doing it: tight packed schedule. <clears throat> short rosters, COVID lung, all of these factors. There's a lot of people. It's like, am I really going to friggin' run around here? Well, it's, like it's crazy? connectivity too with the unit. Yeah. When right. you have guys moving in and out of the unit too, that destroys some of the cohesion in these groups right. as well as lineups. I mean, but, we can all, we can all look back on that Tice Thompson thing and say that was never going to succeed defensively. But you have to just recognize that like, you know what? We tried it the other way and it didn't work. So the only way we're going to be able to get back and, 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 and win and get on any sort of consistent streak is if we commit to it. Uh, and you see them having done that more so over it's this almost little stretch. time. You better. And so you kind of, yeah, you talk about flipping a switch. It's nice to know you can do it defensively because you have to be able to, that, that's the most perplexing thing about this team all year. Like it's so easy to, bitch about the offense and not getting enough scoring from the bench and this and that but ultimately just decent defensive effort and two and two superstar players should have this game team 10 games over 500 without really trying um you know but look at all these games that they lost to washington's and you know and 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 uh you know new york and and and, and just I'm not New York's not a bad team, but I mean, how many how many bottom feeders have they dropped games to by just not showing up or not giving it an effort? Way too many this year. So For sure, I want to throw that, in one more thing on Kemba. The stats are just astounding for him this month because if you look at his numbers, it's probably the worst shooting month he's had since the first month coming in off that injury. Yeah. But it's the best he's fit with the offense when you think of assists, ball movement. At rebounding stuff you talk about just finding a role within that unit defense even he's he's been a part of a effective defensive group with this team and that assist to turnover ratio 49 to 11 for a team that has turned the ball over a ton this year that was his most important attribute last year is he kept the turnovers low he controlled the ball and he hasn't been i mean this month he's averaging over seven assists he's never been that guy in his career but right. this is what you but said, that's John. That's what you never played with guys become. who could let him be that guy. Right. That's what. That's what's in again. Is it, it's so Chris is not going to get it done. It's yeah. so funny seeing the uh, the chat. There's there's a ton of people in here who are who are viewing this game as a trash game and get rid of him. And it's like I would like I said is no. I I've been blown I, away by him this month. I think I would. I, I think again. I don't know about blown away. How about like, that Portland performance? Though? He I, was he found yeah, Rob. He, had, he, he had, was finding he had, shooters. He had, to, he had to address that right away. That was funny. <laughs> <laughs> I, but like I said, there's no reason to make the point with hyperbole. Like Cornette's not starting, and I'm not blown away. No, but away this is by a guy is, who, for a guy who dishes four assists a game in his career to be getting seven every night now, that's that's significant. Again, it's seven assists. <laughs> I, I, it's I, I, you can't get blown away by an average number from him from, from a point from card. him I am but you can be happy you know let's, let, he had a good game tonight okay? he's a score <laughs> he's a score first point guard he's been that his whole life yeah. now yeah, he's but, adjusting yeah, to become but, a facilitator well this is the well, conversation Bobby, we we're having we, right. we can't ignore the fact that he's got a significantly better cast hey, he did last year around. too yeah yeah and he was Same learning how to play with those guys last year. Yeah, but it would be again Kemba doing a little of everything versus it, 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 and again that's that's where I, I mentioned it to start. You see the low shot attempt, like you love this. You love this line from Marcus Smart, right? Eight, you know when he's got you know more assists, eight or nine shots, four you know four of eight. You know, like that's a great Marcus Smart line. Is it a great Kemba Walker line? That's what we're trying to figure out now. Is this? Are you comfortable with this version of Kemba if this is what you get? And no, every Hell once in yes. a while, no, every once in a while, or do you, or do you need, as Barkley said or Shaq said, the guy who 
is is doing that, but also pumping in 17, 18 points a game, you know, versus 10 or 12. You know, you you might yeah. need a little bit more output to, to, to tick it up, you know, but also have that other stuff. Because 22 point, 23 point Kemba, I think, is gone. You know, he's averaging about 17 for the year now. You'd like to see that while also – you know, on, on just more efficient, as Sherrod said, is how did you get to that total? You know, did you get it going four for seven or four for 17? You know, like yeah. it's nice to get to 17 points if he's shooting six for six for 13, six for 12, as opposed to having to jack 20 shots to get his points, which is not what this team needs. Because Kemp on a night, Kemp is shooting 20 times. That's taking shot. That's taking shots away from Jalen and Jason. And you don't want that. It, how many times do you see Jalen just disappear for stretches? You know, like, yeah, that, no, that was my biggest point coming in this year. Yeah. How would he be useful on this team without getting in Jalen's way? Because Jalen's going to be yeah. getting on that ball and scoring more. And that needs to be the case every night. So I don't want to see Walker taking a lot of shots and taking possessions away from Brown. Brown's just a more efficient player and a more dynamic player at this point. Yeah, but I think at the same time, though, you need Kemba to just have to – he has to be that threat, right? I, I mean, yeah. if he's like 7 for 10 or if he's, you know, something like that, teams aren't going to leave him open. I mean, regardless, even if he's having a cold night for the most part, right, they're not going to leave him, uh, you know, that open out there. But when he's a constant threat, because teams know that even if he hasn't scored in plus minutes or whatever or if he's gone scoreless – for the bulk of the first, uh, you know, five minutes, six minutes of a fourth quarter, he could still drop two back-to-back threes on you, and all That's of a, a sudden, great point. You know, you're gonna no, call and a timeout. You, you need to do that to be a great passer too. You can't just be taking no shots and. Yeah, trying to get to positions and that's kind of what smart how smart became a great passer like he wasn't the most efficient scorer but he was getting to those spots and making himself a threat and showing that he was willing to take all those shots the defense has had to react accordingly now this is Kemba defenses are gonna react anyway but uh you know what I've noticed about him this month too we've talked about this all season John getting to the rim he couldn't do a period to start this year. At this all, month, that was the biggest concern, and and especially last game, uh, he got there. That's exactly it. He just it's that half step and just extending out in front of you. Just before he was getting blocked every time, or and so he's he's, fin up. he's finishing there, and he can pass from there. And defenses don't know which he's gonna do. He's you shooting sixty percent inside this month. You guys joked about it where I put up that graphic showed that that showed his two point shooting stats. But remember, he went through that spell where he just didn't score any right. points, <laughs> any non three pointers. Yeah, finished with like six points one game, and then like yeah. Uh, but he just couldn't do it. it was zero. Crazy. I remember that graphics. <laughs> it was like twenty points, zero from two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is crazy. <laughs> no, but it was weird. It was, it was that weird. it was it was remarkable because he was so uh he was he was so is so inefficient early. So yes, seeing him get to the it's again like Sherrod said, how he's getting his points. Um I'm gonna tell everybody again once one more time because it, it, I feel bad actually. We got a ton of people in the room for 1 30 a.m. So we will keep it going a little while longer. I don't wanna I don't wanna totally bolt, but it is late. It is a school night, and um, we do have to head over to locker room, and we will be doing that soon. So again, just a reminder to everybody, I, guys. Some of you guys, I'm starting to get mad at you. Like you're in here all day long. Come join us. Come join the party. It's the after party. <laughs> like what do you? You sit here and you yell at us on the chat all day long. Come yell at us for real. You know, let's lend your voices to the conversation. Okay. Download the app. And I know we have a lot of you guys who said it's an Android situation. And I totally get it. Uh, and again, hopefully that's going to be rectified, but if you have uh, an iPhone or whatever, a Mac product, download it, jump on with us, join the chat audio only app. It's our sponsor. We want to show them love because it allows us to keep doing this. It allows us to do more of this, hopefully. Um, so come join the chat. Sherrod and I are going to head over. These guys are going to come over a little bit after that. Josue is in it to win it tonight. He's going to be there the whole time. <laughs> he made some adjustments. He yeah. looked at what went wrong on Tuesday and he changed it around. He's here. Uh, Columbia Coffee. We're going to get the best version of yeah. Josue tonight. For best, sure. ver <laughs> best version of Josue. First, first five questions all at Josue. You got to keep him engaged. Aged. If you give him a chance to, if he, you don't want Joe Sway standing up by the three point line, okay? We got to run no, some. Set, there, we're gonna, we're gonna run some sets for think, him early. Yeah. You think I'm? You think I'm not there? And then I'll come in and you know I'll laugh at one of your Boom. jokes. Or I'll, 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 you know, 
I'll have a retort for you. So I, I, I found this interesting. I appreciate tonight. you laughing at my jokes. Thank you, though. <laughs> I know uh, Sherrod mentioned Peyton Pritchard tonight, who quietly did have a pretty good game. He did. Um, he said after the game, I think you could say I hit the rookie wall. It's a grind for sure. You get tired. You have yeah. to stay physically and mentally That's prepared. Oh, yeah. That's something I can continue to improve on. And, you know, we had a, there was a stretch at the beginning of the season where, like, Every single night, the opening segment was Pritchard, and he got lost in the fold for a little bit there. So it's tough to tell. Is he going to be that dynamic guy from the beginning of the season, or is he going to kind of get lost in the fold here in the playoff time? It's tough to tell like what his role is going to become playoff time because he was so important early on. Well, well I think – oh, go ahead, Shiro. No, you, know, you got it, Joe Sway. All right, well, I was going to say, you know, I, I think he's starting to get back to uh, getting the ball in his hands more often. And I don't know if that was a little bit of more experimenting between Brad Stevens and his second unit and obviously trying to deal Jeff with – Yeah, you know, trying to yeah. deal with uh, the interchanging pieces and uh, what was it, the trade deadline. There was a lot going on at that time. And, and of course, that's when Pritchard hit that, that rookie wall. But, uh, you know, in that second quarter, when, when, when you see Tatum, you know, giving the ball to him or at least – Letting him bring the ball up, I think that's because you're going to have to have that secondary playmaker coming off your bench down the stretch and, of course, into the postseason. I think Pritchard can be that guy. I mean, he just weathers the storm. I mean, whether it's uh, a situation where the Celtics are behind or the Celtics just have to start, you know, uh, settling down a bit, you know, they get a little too trigger happy towards the end of the first quarter and they start blowing away a lead or whatever the case may be. How good is his shot? Pritchard could Pritchard's come in and get that ball. He, well, he, he did, controls Pritchard, the offense. He went and that's cold what you want for from somebody. And, of course, who can give you that defensive energy on the other end as well. I'm just talking about how it looks, John. Like no, the two absolutely. we hit on the right wing there, it's smooth. Yeah. I mean, look, one of the great things about Pritchard, and it's been since day one, is he's fearless. So he doesn't play like a guy who's worried, like, am I going to make a mistake and get pulled? Uh, or, you know, doesn't look like the moment's too big for him at all. But the trade off is he can take some hero ball shots, you know, and he's had, uh, so every once in a while, he's kind of jacking shots where they're like, ah, that's not really the one you should be looking for, but it's because he's willing to take those um, that, that, you know, he's been successful, but his shooting um, for this month of April has been a, a, a just atrocious. Um, so he definitely did hit a wall. I mean, he shot, He's shooting 30% for the month, 23 from three uh, after going 50 and 50 for the month of March. So he definitely, definitely tapered off a little bit. Um, so, yeah, you do want to see him kind of bounce back. Um, it's not just the rookie wall and playing this many games. It's this many games this fast. So I do wonder right. how that's going to affect a lot of people here. You know, you always go from a 30-game college schedule to an 80-game, and it's right around the 40, 50-game mark where they're like, geez, this is long. But on top of that, you know, He's been there. Every, has he missed a game? Uh, he tore. He had oh, duh, duh, duh. he missed that. He missed that long stretch. He missed six yeah. weeks. So yeah. Yeah, I, I take that back. I totally spaced on that. He missed a quite a bit of time. So he's got fewer games under his belt as a result there. But um, he's just got to keep. But that going. knocked him off too. I it mean, did. that was one yeah. of many factors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, He's got a yeah. He had, fans, yeah. They were freaking out when he saw him down. <laughs> yeah, he had, the, oh, he had the a end. couple moments this year. That one, the smart one. I mean, it could have gotten bad. <laughs> that was the, M- smart that was the MCL. Was like, yeah, smart was almost like, is this going to end the season, or we're not going to wait? That would have been the, the knockout blow right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, they're going to need him because I mean, we were counting down the amount of people on the um, who you're willing to count on. I think he's one of the he's one of eight right at this point. He's your your, your starters, your starters, Tristan. That's my question for sure. Is he going pr- to be involved? That's your that's playoff. Your, that's your playoff that's your rotation. eight. That's your eight playoff rotation. He's absolutely yeah. essential there, especially without you know bringing anybody else. I mean, you know, we, we are not even going to do the IT segment here. But um, well, that's a, that's my question. Is it, is he just going to spell Kemba and Smart for five minutes? Right or is he going to be a real deal piece for this playoff rotation? Like I think they're going to need playing, him to contribute. I think he's playing 12 to 15 minutes easy most games. Um even even in a tight rotation, I think the guys who are going to fall off is you might get you might get one turn at a Romeo, you know, in the first half, but it's going to be I don't know if you're going to see them again in a tight game in the second half. You see Brad do that a lot, particularly in the playoffs. He'll they'll give everybody that turn in the Can't first there. half. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, but then, then in the second half, nope. You know, those minutes get really tight, and you're really down to just basically eight guys. I remember think, the 90-second canter. <laughs> no, no, that that's so awesome. true, though. No, Brad does that. That was awesome. So my, uh, my, my high school coaches do that shit. <laughs> yeah. No, but it, it's, it's true. It's okay, Josue. We won't let you relive those painful moments in your childhood. <laughs> No, but it's it's a quick hook. Yeah, I, did that, I did that one for the team. I do, I do that up there, that little, that little log. You'll get a little Grant. You'll get a little bit of Romeo maybe, um, you know, semi-situationally. But I think it's it's a really Jimmy, tight rotation. Um, yeah, no. Um, th- but that's why Pritch is so important, right? I mean, you, you need yeah. someone like that. And especially if Marcus needs a break. And, and you and need him a, to be – you need offense not, from him. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. But for, for someone like Marcus, because a lot of people would just assume or, or they feel comfortable just plugging in Marcus with that second unit or uh, him or Kemba, or just one of those guys is fine and Pritchett can grab nine or ten minutes. But sometimes those guys need a break and it's not necessarily think- because of foul trouble. You know, maybe they just need to just check out for a few minutes. I think I think that's when Pritchard, that's a valuable piece to have, especially down the stri- oh, especially uh, towards the end of the regular season and, and going into the playoffs. I think yeah. Pritchard's playing time is going to be predicated to some extent on Fournier, who has the ability to be a playmaker. If That's Fournier is, is in the game and he's rolling and him and Smart and Kimba are playing well together, we may see Peyton Pritchard not play much at all in the plus. I wouldn't be shocked if That's Brad – win- I wouldn't be surprised if Brad short into a seven-man rotation where Tristan and Fournier are the only two that come off the bench. Yeah. I want wouldn't this rotation the conference, as – Conference finals? Yeah, maybe. I want this rotation as short as possible come playoff time. Like, I just, they can't mess around with those Romeo minutes, John, and even Pritchard (laughs) at this point. They can't mess around. They can't. Their margin for error is too slim. He usually does, right? Like I said, even when he lost Hayward last year, I know he usually does, but this year feels different. It's a quick hook. You need it simply because you can't play those guys 40 minutes every game. You, the right. math doesn't work out. You have to spell Tatum and Brown. Well, Fournier so, helps it now. So, so yeah. we'll see. Fournier yeah, helps but also, it. But you know, you, I get the feeling that Grant's going to be like his uh, – You know, so uh, he's you know Grant's going to get in there. He's getting <laughs> but you, easily. But you can hide Fournier in, in a lineup that – I mean, sorry, you can hide Romeo in a lineup Romeo. that has Fournier and another starter because you're not throwing out, you know – uh, you know, five guys out there and they're like, Cornette. who the hell is going to shoot here? Right. You have to pick one though, don't you? Like it's, it's not going to be Romeo and Grant and pre- like, it's probably just going to be it's one of be those guys. Base. It'll be yeah. match base. But I mean, just yeah. look at the regular rotations. If you have Tatum kind of coming back in at the end of the first quarter to start the second, you could have a Tatum Romeo lineup in there. And then Jalen comes in and spells somebody like it's still played Fournier still on the court. Like it's, I, I think you're still doing that in the playoffs, but you're right. It's in that second half in the close game. Games, it's that quick hook with those guys. But again, part the reason we're having this discussion is, you know, there's no question Pritchard is in the in the circle of trust. I think for this for this unit, he's you know he is <laughs> the circle of trust. Circle of trust. I, I think he is. He's in the it's cot, thin. people. He's yeah. in the cot. Uh, real quick, just, a, just <laughs> once you're out, you don't go back in the circle, right? Just a notification <laughs> here: we had opened the locker room uh, link. And the app crashed momentarily. We'll be putting up a new link. So anybody who went in there, you probably got booted and wondered why. Uh, we're putting up a new link shortly, um, and that'll be the one that we're going to migrate to uh, as soon as it's working. So I'm just waiting. Okay, it's in there, and I believe it's been put in the chat as well. Um, so the latest link is the correct link, and this one is, I believe, working. The room is open. Um, there you go. So we're going to head over there in a few minutes, but we're going to kind of go around the world here uh, for another thought, uh, for our final thoughts. Um, uh, Sherrod, we'll start with you because we're going to be exiting shortly. Yeah, uh, a good win because it was just that, a win. Uh, And they need to to start stacking them as many as they can. The schedule, as we talked about earlier, the schedule is going to work out in their favor, I think, where they're going to get some opponents that are beatable. And again, this Celtics team, at worst, when all said and done, going into the playoffs should be the fourth seed, uh, and I and I, that's I think that's where they're going to ultimately wind up being. And if they got to play the Atlanta Hawks in the first round, okay, take that. It's a tough we'll one. Take that. Let's go. Let's go to that trip. No, yeah, no. In all seriousness, though, but I I also believe whether it's the fourth or fifth seed that they end up in, it's the attitude. Like keep this going, Celtics. You know, go into this Golden State Warriors game thinking, look, we got to. Let's blow these guys out. Let's put a message out there. National TV. They can do it. 
a lot of these nationally televised games, I mean, the Celtics have, have raised eyebrows, but then they've, you know, blown leads here and there. They've done things that make people like Charles Barkley, you know, go on air and say, ah, they, they need Kemba because they're looking from, you know, from the outside looking in. Or, or if you're watching a game every four or five games, you're wondering, well, maybe that's the missing piece here. Whereas guys like us, we watch the games every single night. We realize that it's the, the roster is there. You know, there's talent. You know, it's enough. To, to sustain the defensive level, the, the defense that we've been seeing the last couple of weeks. And I, I expect that on, on Saturday. So yeah. um, that, yeah. that, that's what I think is going to happen against the Warriors. I, 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 I'm, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call another win, another win for the Southern. I think so, too. Yeah, Curry's, I mean, uh, Curry's trying a tough assignment, though. Yeah. I, I, the He'll thing get is, 40. He'll get 40. Yeah. They, they need to separate right now uh, because you, while you're in fourth, tied for fourth, you're losing that tie break to Atlanta because you've dropped a couple games to them already this year. Uh, but on on top of that, you're still Boy, there. They. they are one game up in the loss column from eight. So you're still dangerously close to play in territory. You need a three, four game cushion from that seven, eight thing. So they're doing it now. I mean, this is what? Is this five straight? Yep, I know you Four. don't want to fall into the seventh. Like that's, but you just you, you just can't I like, do it. I like the format. Don't get me wrong, but man, like you can be in a tough spot. No, at this <laughs> point, now that we see that what this team's capable of, that would be a horrible failure, and obviously something would have to go wrong. I think for it to happen, because right now the way they're playing, they're not going to lose many games. As Sherrod said, we've not only seen this team get back to being healthy. Uh, but we've seen them form an identity to some degree. And we've seen their best players step up to the plate and f- figure out what their roles are in all of this. Like everybody's starting to look a little bit more comfortable with what they need to do right now. So I have a little doubt about this team going on a run here. Now, I was wrong about the seven-game homestand being a turning point. Who knows what's around the corner now for this team. And we'll keep an eye on that Rob situation because they're not well sustained to lose a starter or even a rotation piece at this point. Uh, just given how important every single piece is here. But as far as how they're playing this month, not only the record, but just the attitudes and defense and attitude, like everything you look at here is awesome. Like yeah. uh, it's, it's just a great looking team. They're fun to watch again. And uh, they're knocking off wins. Like it's nothing like we saw early in the season. We kept asking like, was this 2019? We'll see. But I just never felt it. I felt like there were real issues, losses, stuff going on that was undermining the team rather than they have all this stuff. How come they can't do anything with it? That was the big difference to me. I, I do. Bobby is Bobby is easily impressed, um, but it doesn't mean he's wrong. Like it, they're better right now. You know, like it, yeah. it is, you, you have reason to feel better. Was that after- sort of kind of a compliment? No, no, no. He's, <laughs> it's like look, a backhanded compliment. Look, right, right now we've got you know Cornet is a Cornet is a key piece of the future, and uh, blown away by a se- blown away by a seven assist game from a point guard. So we are definitely <laughs> we're definitely we're definitely hyping things up a little bit. It was a backhanded compliment. <laughs> yo, even Joe Sway had seven assists, yo, back in the day. I'm gonna keep the Cornet <laughs> log for for every ninety plays. But that has that 20 point 10 rebound playoff game. Bobby's gonna say, See, where Bob, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what like, I yo, look at the tape. Look at what the I'm messing, what I'm messing with, like I said, yeah, it's it's a half joke, but at the end of the day, they it's more fun to watch. They're playing with more urgency, it looks closer to a Celtics team that you expected to see. What they're gonna do against the, the big three here is anybody's guess, you know. Um, no, but, I mean. If yeah. you look at the numbers right now, this month, I know it's only seven games, but seven games is something. Yeah. They're playing like the Nets on offense and they're playing like the Lakers on defense, statistically. Like yeah. they are 121 offensive lit rating and like 110 defensive rating. They're just destroying teams right now. And we've seen them do it to Denver. And uh, I know you guys weren't impressed with the Minnesota one, but a fully loaded Minnesota team going toe to toe. I was them. not, but I was super impressed with the Portland game. That was I, the that's Portland my one fav- as well. That's my favorite yeah, of this stretch. Bobby fully loaded. <laughs> um, all right, so um, Gerard, head on over uh, right now. Uh, head over to locker room. You too, John. I'm heading over to tweet it to your fault. He's oh, gone. geez, we gotta do this thing again. Hold on, I gotta be the host here. Bobby, didn't I tell you to come pr- prepared for this? I need a closer notice. Normally, you need more notice. I actually need like a closer notice in these cases. I know, I know. Uh, we we know we're gonna we've, we we we've done this quite a bit, right? Yeah, we have. 
<laughs> yeah, awesome. yeah. Um, oh, Sherrod made it into the room. I'm proud of the guy. Um, he was out quick. He's out quick. What do you want us to talk? Give us a topic here for me and Joe Sway to toss around. Uh, oh, I thought Bobby had some. Normally um, well, I do, but. You know what? I got a good one, and I want to talk. I'm going to bring this to locker room as well. Um, this, okay. I don't like doing this. I don't like, I don't like lending credence to other people's bullshit hot takes. Oh. Okay. However, um, uh, I, I, I don't know which one you think I'm saying. I'm going to play a, the clip. The, which one are you talking about? Brad today? No. Or just, there was just a, the whole thing in general. What are you talking about right now? The, Damn it, there was a Nick, Nick Wright, who I think is the largest Yahoo of all of them, and probably has less right to any any opinion than anybody who spouts opinions. Oh, but what do you say this time? His point was, or the thing that he said was, um, you know, he was he, he he hates Boston and he's backhanding them left and right. But the point that he That's made like was stick, man, he time. loves it. He loves crapping on Boston. It's his stick. But yeah. the thing that he said was, look, Syracuse at the end alum. of the day, Boston's never going to win. Like, what are you going to do if you're Boston? Look at the top three teams in the East and look at their best player. If your best player is Tatum, is Tatum ever going to beat Giannis? Is Tatum ever going to beat KD and or Harden? Is Tatum ever going to beat uh, – who am I missing? What's the third team here? Uh, Embiid. You know, the, Bam, if, oh. Yeah. So he's saying all of those teams' best players are better than your best player. Um, and so I don't know if it's right or not, but it is an interesting conversation when you're talking about you have to be a complete team to be able – if you if you need a better team effort right now. And the Celtics are top-heavy with stars, and they're not a great team. So it's not whether or not I give a crap what that guy says. I just was wondering I got if, you. You, if you think about it, you're right. It like That's why we talk about Tatum's got to enter that top five conversation where you got to be like – Hell yeah, he's as good as those guys. But when he's not, and you're looking up at those guys, you're like, yeah, they kind of do. Not only do they have the top end talent, but the rest of their roster is right. Is you know what I would this- love to see yeah. next week? I'm heading Holy- out. I, you uh, wanted yeah, something to yeah, talk yeah. about? <laughs> yeah. no, I, I just dropped I heard that you, one. man. I heard you. Don't worry. Yeah. I got you. Right. So that, that just makes me think of this, Joe Sway. You know what I would love to see next week? And we're not going to get it because we just don't get nice things with this NBA regular season. Fully so- loaded Nets. Fully loaded Celtics going at it next week. I think it's in, I think it's in Brooklyn. I don't know where it is, but whatever. They're playing next week. Go in there, face KD, Harden, Kyrie. You don't have to win, but just hang in there right till the final seconds. Show you're on that level. That's what this team has to do right now regarding what John just said. Like that's the cream of the crop when it comes to, um, elite teams in the East as far as top end talent goes. If Tatum Brown and Kemba can go in there and hang with that group, you're talking about something. But so far this year, even a slightly undermanned Nets team has just wiped the Nets, uh, the Celtics off the floor. Yeah. I mean, we sort of talked about this last season, or at least we talked about how the Eastern conference has got significantly better. Right. And of course the Celtics, I mean, whether people agree that, uh, you know, Tatum's going to be a top five guy or not, I think we all agreed that at least the Celtics and Brad Stevens are going to most likely put together that team that has a top 10 guy, you know, full-fledged top 10, whether people want to put him top five or not. You know, obviously this is like a year ago, right, or close to it. And the, the other pieces, you know, Jalen, top 20 guy, and then you have everyone else, right? And we looked at a team in the recent history. Well, I shouldn't say recent history, but we looked in the history of the last 15, 20 years, and we're like, well, maybe the Celtics could be sort of that, like, Detroit Pistons of the NBA, right? I mean – the Detroit Pistons very rarely had the best player uh, of the series, but of course they had the better team. And I think when you think about Brad Stevens, of course his background and coaching and not just necessarily what he did on the collegiate level, but the program that he brought to the final four in Butler, like that's a, that's significant in the sense of, of what he's been able to do with underdogs in the past. And a lot has been made about that. Of course, the last five, six years with Isaiah Thomas and, you know, those teams before that, uh, the overachieving squads, if you will, the overachieving era, if you will, of, of Celtics basketball. But now we're talking about a legitimate top 10 guy. You know, does Tatum have to be a top five guy in order to knock off one of those teams? Maybe, maybe I not. I think so. You think he has to be? I yeah, just I because I think – I think when it's it tough com- to say because, you know, in today's NBA where, like, a lot of teams, a lot of the top tier teams, they have that dynamic duo. How many of those guys fall in the top ten? Sure, the Brooklyn Nets have a team like that. The Los Angeles Lakers do, too, as well. But how we know what the difference five, is? The difference, the difference is the Nets have a guy like, let's say, Jeff Green, 
who could get you 20 if he's playing at his his best level on a play in a playoff game. We've seen him do that. He did it to the Celtics in Game Seven. Philly has a Tobias Harris. Uh, you know, even a Seth Curry could have a massive game for them in a playoff game. And then when you think of Milwaukee, it wouldn't be anything to see Chris Middleton get 40. Uh, Dante DiVincenzo could do all that. Um, you know, they have a bunch of role guys who can really go out there. When it comes to the Celtics. Like we love Robin Thompson, they're not scoring any more than twelve to fourteen points. Um, Kemba at this point probably capped at like twenty twenty one the way he's been playing, and you know Fournier is the X factor here. I see this guy chiming in here. Can Fournier be that guy who could go off in tandem with Tatum and Brown? This is why I think that addition was so important because Tatum could have twenty five, Brown could have twenty five. You throw in a twenty twenty five from Fournier there, that's enough to win a playoff game. I mean, but Bobby, outside of Brooklyn though, like which other team in the East, you know, at their best, top three, their best three against the Celtics' best three. I mean, the Celtics can go up against anyone except for Philly. Brooklyn. Philly, what Tobias Harris? You telling me between hey, Jalen Brown, Jason he's, Tatum, and he's Temple been like Walker, that this that year. They can't give these dudes the business. I mean, for the first time in a long time, we saw those three guys score twenty plus. Like, I'm not saying that that's going to be the normal all of a sudden, but in a best of seven series, and that's another thing too with Brad Stevens. Like, that's an advantage to have in the best of seven series. He does a really good job of coaching, and of course, you know Eric Spoelstra got the best of him. But Eric Spoelstra is Eric let's Spolster. be honest though. So I probably take Jalen Brown over Ben Simmons right now. But Tobias versus Kemba, that hasn't been close this year. Tobias has the edge. Yeah. That's true. So that's all I'm saying here is those top three teams, they have big threes that you can't mess around with. And Drew Holiday versus Kemba, I, I, Drew is completely see, blown thing, away this that's year. That's the thing that guys like Brad – I mean Brad. Guys like uh, uh, Charles Barkley and, 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 uh, and was it Shaq, I think they were getting yep. to it about the Celtics, about how important Kemba is. They're looking at it as, well – what are they going to do against Philly and Brooklyn? Whereas we're looking at it as, well, the Celtics can still get pretty far in the playoffs if they can somehow avoid those two teams in the first two rounds. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, once you reach that point, yeah, of course, Kemba has to revert to somewhat of that guy he was in that first four or five months uh, as a Boston, as a member of the Boston Celtics. I'm taking Brown over Simmons. Oh. Brown's a 40% three-point shooter and can score from every level on the court. I, I'm taking that over Simmons' finishing and transition runs. I know he's a great defender, but... Oh, people, taking, people taking Simmons? Yeah, I mean, and it's close. I'm not saying Brown blows him away. Um, yeah, it's, and, it's but close, you also, but because of Embiid's MVP season, yeah, it's, it's not. It's tough. It's a tough matchup for the Celtics. What's up, Joel? Joel Pagone hey, is in up, here. Bro? All right, so... Uh, you know, that kind of shapes up the East a little bit. That's We're not going to get a lot of these tests down the stretch of the season because the schedule is just bad for Boston. Down, They're not going to see Philly again. They're not going to see Milwaukee again. They'll get that test against uh, Brooklyn, though. So that's the big one right now that you have to look at. And hopefully the Celtics are fully loaded by then. This Rob thing is so important. If Rob starts to miss significant time here and then he has to get acclimated and back in the shape and this kind of stuff that would just kind of shake this team off its foundation right now with what was getting them rolling at this point it was nice tonight though to still see the offense moving and doing some of the things that rob helped spur and um you know kind of maintain that offensive momentum they were i think through like the middle of the third quarter they're shooting close to 60 percent. so the celtics are rolling in a way where at least for right now, one guy can go down and other guys can pick up the slack there when it comes to passing, when it comes to scoring, even rim defense today. Like the one thing you would think they would miss most about Rob is rim protection and Thompson and Cornette both clean that up. So to see the depth of the team actually step up a little bit in some sense is great. Um, any other thoughts out of tonight before we hop over that locker room, whether Celtics no, are around like the league? I said about Tristan. I mean, of course I was thinking about you as Tristan Thompson's going playing just great basketball just a great game from him on both great ends. defense i mean this is what i this is why i freaked out about him joe sway because this is what he was in cleveland grinder defensively versatile strong rim protector rebound you bobby i swear sometimes i think the Celtics just gave the dude a break man they're like listen we know what time it is you know this is that point where you you know we, we want to gear up for the final stretch we don't. We're not quite sure what we have between Wagner and this this Cornette guy, so we can get we can get some reps in with these guys. You know what I mean? Like, and it's great because he's a veteran and he understands that. And both ends, you know, both sides, it's a mutual agreement. 
and it's beneficial. Like, look what happened. I mean, look, I don't know if that's true or not, but like, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if others did that for someone like that. You know, a veteran who's obviously proven himself in this league. Yeah, before. I don't, I don't know, but and plenty okay. of basketball left. But no, I mean, what is interesting? Regardless, to see the break, the break worked. It was good. It was good for him. To see him come back like this, that's not normally what you expect from someone coming off that. That's for sure. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah. who, who, this question, who, who do you want to see? You can either take this as like, who could they beat or who do you want to see them like measuring stick against? Um, I kind of want Atlanta. I just want, I think that's a good, uh, that's a good test right there. And then after that, let's just see if you could, because again, you got Trey well, Young, you got, you got a young big in the middle, you know, like there's, there's that dynamic where the Celtics could be really challenged. And of course you have outside shooters. I mean, the Celtics throughout the course of the regular season, defending the three point arc has been an issue. So you get a little bit of uh, you get a little bit from, from, from Brad's perspective, Brad would be like, this is, you get a little bit of everything of, of, of some of our uh, biggest challenges this year in that first I round matchup. I think you just want to go to Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> that too, maybe, maybe a little bit of that. <laughs> you don't want to be seeing Charlotte. You don't want to be seeing. Uh... <laughs> Yo, I honestly, that didn't even cross my mind. That Sherrod brought it up. Sherrod was like, "Oh, well, Atlanta." I was like, "Oh, oh yeah." Atlanta, well, what's interesting round. is two of the real possibilities are. It, it's like a it's like a roulette right now. You got you got Miami in one. You got. Atlanta in one, but then if you hit the wrong one, you're going to Charlotte. <laughs> yeah, but Bobby, after what happened last year, bro, and I, I don't know if it was you or Jimmy, but I, I, I was pretty passionate about it after one of our live broadcasts. One of these post-game shows, I was like, man, Miami, Toronto, like, that would have been the best road trip. Like, you know I mean? The best, the best uh, traveling, traveling four or five days in the first two-round matchups. I mean, what more do you want? I mean, no, was it? No, Philly, my fault. Philly? Philly's uh, a good time, you know. Philly's not bad. You got Philly first round, then it was Toronto, and then Miami, you know, Eastern Conference Finals. That's that's I, the dream. I, right there. I don't think don't New York's. I don't think New York's in the cards because they're not good enough. But that would be fun. I mean, going up against yeah, the Knicks fans, fun. and then you know the Knicks Celtics thing that hasn't been a thing in a while. But you know, it would just like shoot right back up. Right. But Plus, I that, think the Celtics. That, that's up the pike too. You know, they got a son that's right, Bobby. I mean. John's yeah. sending us they're playing the Knicks. <laughs> oh, easily. Yeah. We wouldn't even have to fight for that one. Um yeah. Charlotte, though, that's the one you don't want. And they're falling anyway. So I think it it really is if the Celtics are gonna be four, it's gonna be Atlanta or Miami. And if I had to pick between those two, I want Miami. Like I'm the kind of guy who's like, all right, let's get the measuring stick out. Let's see how this team really lines up. And if you can get through Miami. The tricky thing is there, though, if you have that seven-game first-round series, and we saw this with after Toronto last year, I think we underrated how much that Toronto series took out of the Celtics, that if you do run up against Miami and go seven games first round and just squeak out of there, you might be going up against a team in uh, Brooklyn that sweeps through Charlotte or something round one, which isn't advantageous. So I guess uh, I would take Atlanta out of those ones and just try to Beat their defense because I still don't believe in it. Although they've been very good this year, um, yeah. but yeah, we've gone on A long enough. Ago, we, we weren't even talking about Atlanta. That's true. We can uh, take this over to locker room. I still see some great questions. Normally, I'm not loving the questions here in our in our after show of sorts. I know, but and you and you openly tell them, Bobby. That's it's, it's well, you get like, ins- you get inspired. It's a good thing because they're gonna really try to come harder next time. But it's also like, man, you're, you're a tough judge on these guys. So that is it for tonight. Celtics are back in Boston on Saturday. This was a nice road trip sweep out west for Boston, an impressive one at that. Yes, uh, there you got the Warriors on Saturday, another primetime national TV game. At the Garden. Steph Curry's back in that MVP race, but that team is not all that impressive otherwise. You're going to be looking at the guys that are on the court with them and be like, who's that? Who's that? There's a 95? <laughs> I know. One of them's named Juan Toscano. You're Toscano, gonna be like, I was going to say. You're going to give him that jersey. This is Toscano that made the league. Oh, man. All right. Shout out to Jimmy. He better, he, We're better on the, be, he better be up for that one. Come on, Jimmy. We're on the locker room. Get that app if you haven't. They're already getting started over there, so you can jump right over and get in the queue to ask your questions over there on the air. Yes, if you sir. don't have locker room or you don't have an iPhone, we put the sound on our Celtics post game show 
uh, podcast feed, which is available everywhere you get podcasts, Android or Apple, and you can listen to it the next day. We're trying to get that app underway for Android. It shouldn't be that hard, but they're running into some bumps here and trying to get it done. So hopefully that's done within the next week or so, or at least by the playoffs. So for Joe Sway Pavone, everybody here on Celtics Post Game, we're going to see yeah. you over on Locker Room.